This is just a trigger warning for the beginning of this video. Uh, the following fanfiction will contain uh, suicide, uh, mention of suicide, death, dark themes, and sexual themes. Yeah, it's pretty wild for my first one. Uh, this was actually requested over two years ago for me to read by my friends Obzo and uh, Symphony. So I'm doing it first as sort of like a, hey, I'm finally doing this kind of thing. It was a Wednesday. A Wednesday that he would never forget. Sonic the Hedgehog was walking down the streets as he usually did, like always. Years ago, he had saved the world from Robotnik, who later spiraled into a depression and stopped doing the bad things. Instead, he turned his life around and got a job at a local IHOP. Sonic himself decided to settle down and started a family with the girl who had always admired him. Her name was Audra Bradford. <laughs> That's not Amy. <laughs> she was a human woman that Sonic had fallen in love with despite her being 12 years younger than her. That... I'm gonna assume it means despite him being 12 years younger than her because it's just creepy otherwise. Together, they got married and had three beautiful children, Keith, Declan, and Gertrude. Sonic was happy. For a time. It was always the same with Sonic, and he was getting bored. It was time that Sonic changed his routine, made his life more exciting. He started going out for runs in the middle of the night behind his wife's back, getting into all sorts of rambunctious shenanigans. It reminded Sonic of when he was wild, free, and young, just like the old days. It was that Wednesday night that he took things too far. Sonic was running through the neighborhood when he came across the house of his old nemesis, Eggman. For old time's sake, Sonic decided to ring the doorbell and play some sort of nasty prank on him. However, when Robotnik opened the door, Sonic was in for a surprise. Eggman was unrecognizable. Instead of his round, egg-shaped body, he was slim and fit with a nice six-pack of abs. Instead of a bald head, he was wearing a dashing and very convincing toupee. Sonic was taken aback and thought to himself, Is this Eggman? No way! Before Sonic could speak, however, Robotnik rubbed his eyes and asked, Sonic, is that you? Sonic was hesitant before saying, Eggman. Saying this took Robotnik back. He shook his head. Don't call me that anymore. That isn't who I am. Just call me Ivan, not Ivo. I'm leaving th my actual first name behind too. My name is Ivan. Sonic couldn't believe it. Had Eggman really changed this much? He had to find out. Okay, can I come in, Ivan? Ivan scratched his head. Sure, I suppose. What for? Sonic paused to think of a reason. Just to catch up, I guess. It's been so long, you know? Sonic then entered Ivan's house, a well-put-together little house. Sonic was impressed. There was no sign of Ivan's past life that felt to Sonic like he regretted it immensely. They began talking to one another for hours. Sonic went on about his life, but found interest in Ivan's life after his defeat. Sonic admired Ivan's bravery as he fought through his depression and climbed his way from bankruptcy to make a decent living for himself. Sonic was touched by Ivan's story and felt bad for what he had done to him in the past. That story was incredible. I feel so bad now for what I did to you. But Ivan just smiled. There's no reason to apologize. What I did back then was reprehensible. I just wish I hadn't bothered in the first place. Sonic comforted Ivan. All is forgiven. Sonic and Ivan moved closer to each other. From that moment on, not a word was spoken. The rest of the night was filled with an explosion of love and passion between the hedgehog and his former enemy. <laughs> It was a night that had thrilled Sonic to the core, but one that he had regretted the next morning. Sonic began walking home. He feared for what his wife might think, wondering where he was for the night. He had even contemplated not going home at all. He grabbed a coffee and decided to face his wife. However, upon stepping inside, he found that his wife was not there. Instead, there laid a note on the table that read, Hello, sweetie. I've gone out for groceries. I'll be back in an hour. Also, there was someone who wanted to speak to you. He said he knew you. Take care, dear. 
Sonic thought it peculiar that his wife didn't even question his disappearance. He looked beside the note to find a number. Must have been the person his wife had mentioned in the note and decided to give it a call. After a few rings, the voice on the other side of the phone was all too familiar. Tails, is that you? It's been so long! Sonic gleefully answered the phone. Tails was Sonic's best friend. After Robotnik had been defeated, Tails went on his own separate way in order to prove that he was independent. This was the first he heard of him in years. Tails? <laughs> Nobody calls me that anymore. Everyone calls me Miles now, Tails said from the other side of the phone. Okay, Miles, how have you been? Keeping good, I hope, Sonic asked curiously. Things have been pretty good, I suppose, Miles responded. Look, I know it's kind of abrupt, but I need your help. Something only the fastest thing alive can handle. Okay, I'll do anything to help my best buddy out, Sonic said excitedly. He hadn't been on an adventure in years. Okay then, meet me by the pier at three and we'll talk, okay? Miles said before abruptly hanging up the phone. Sonic looked at the time. It was almost 1.30. Sonic had to hurry if he wanted to make it on time. But before he left, his three kids came walking down the stairs. Daddy, where are you going? Gertrude, the eldest child, said. When does this take place? That's an unacceptable name, Sonic. Well, uh... Daddy has to go to an important meeting, so he's got to leave now, honey, Sonic said. And just leave us here all alone? Gertrude responded smarmily. After a bit of thought, Sonic realized that the children could not take care of themselves. Even Gertrude at 12 was too irresponsible to take care of herself, let alone a 7 and 3 year old. Okay, you can come along then, Sonic said. I mean, Tails was his best friend. What could possibly go wrong? So Sonic loaded his kids in his van and headed off to the pier to meet up with Miles. Upon reaching the pier, Sonic told his kids to wait in the car as he got out and headed to the table that Miles was sitting at. Hi, old buddy, how's it been? Sonic said to his old friend. Miles smiled. Pretty good. Glad you could make it here. So what did you want me for anyway? Sonic questioned. So here's the thing, Sonic. After going on my own, I decided to become an engineer. Of course, nowadays all the money is in weapons dealing, so naturally I began to produce and distribute weapons illegally across the border, Miles explained. Sonic was shocked to hear this. Uh, isn't that dangerous? Sonic said, and Miles nodded. Miles got out of his chair, revealing that one of his two tails had been blown off at some point. Um, I don't know if I want to do this, Miles. It seems pretty dangerous, Sonic said nervously. It was then that Miles got close to Sonic. Look, Sonic, I just hooked the biggest deal in my lifetime. Only someone as fast as you can help me get these weapons across the border. Look, I can pay you a good sum of money if you agree, and once you do this job, you never have to speak to me again. Sonic thought to himself and weighed the options. It was dangerous, but the money could help his family out as they were going through some tough times at the moment. After thinking long and hard, he agreed to help Miles out. Great, I knew I could count on you. Let me load up in your van and head down to the border. Miles said, and they loaded into Sonic's van with his kids and head down to the border. After driving for eight hours, Sonic, his kids, and Miles all made it down to the border and began preparing to smuggle the weapons. Okay, here's the plan. I'll hand you the weapons and you'll dash across the border before anyone notices you. It's a foolproof plan, Miles said, and Sonic nodded, agreeing with him. But before they could load up, a cop noticed them with the weapons, and before they knew it, a whole battalion of cops began to approach Sonic and Miles. Miles threw Sonic a weapon, shouting, Defend yourself! Don't let him get you! Sonic was frightened. He had never used a gun before, that was Shadow's thing. Regardless, he began to fire at the police. A shootout began as helicopters and more police began to show up. Sonic's children began to cry, and Sonic began to worry for their lives. He leaned over to Miles. I think we should turn ourselves in. I don't want to die. But Miles didn't care and responded, I don't want to go to prison. Not again, before firing at the cops again. Sonic tried to move forward to comfort his crying children. He had no idea what he was getting them into and regretted taking them. But before Sonic could see his children, he noticed a cop with a rocket launcher aiming at them and leapt out of the way. The car blew up in a fiery explosion. Sonic barely clung on for life as he witnessed the smoldering wreck of a van before his very own eyes. Miles was also on the ground, weakened from the explosion as cops began to surround him. Miles took out a gun out of desperation and killed himself. Sonic let the cops take him away as he passed out. 
Sonic woke up in a cell, lonely, cold. He had been deemed guilty and sentenced for life while he was unconscious. <laughs> he had been deemed guilty and sentenced for life while he was unconscious. Sonic couldn't believe how he had gotten here, how bad things had spiraled. He had learned that his wife had killed herself after hearing what had happened. Sonic became depressed, day after day living in constant misery. He couldn't take anymore. Sonic had smuggled himself a rope and intended on killing himself that night. As he got on the chair, he heard footsteps come closer, and around the corner came a familiar-looking friend of his. Sonic got onto his knees in front of his last beacon of hope. Ivan, please, help me get out of here. But Ivan just laughed before saying, I finally got you, you wretched hedgehog! Sonic was shocked and saddened at the same time. The only words he could choke out was, Why? Robotnik began to explain. After you had defeated me for the thousandth time, I realized that I had to get more cunning if I was going to stop you. So I pretended to retire and reform myself. Everything that happened was under my watch. I set up the deal with Miles and supplied him with weapons. I tipped the cops that you were coming. I even got my robot minions to kidnap your wife so that you would take the kids with you. Hearing this, Sonic was emotionally destroyed. He had been betrayed by the man he thought he had made friends with, the man he thought he loved. Sonic then went up against the bars. Please, just put me out of my misery. I can't take it anymore. Sonic was now in tears. Robotnik decided to fulfill Sonic's wish and got out his knife, brutally stabbing Sonic in the chest. Sonic fell to the ground, lifeless, as Robotnik quietly walked out of the prison undetected. Robotnik then laughed to himself. His well-laid-out plan one that he had meticulously planned for years, had ended as a success. Finally, Robotnik had won. That wretched hedgehog was gone from his life, and he was free to conquer the world. Other than, you know, Shadow, Knuckles, Amy, Big the Cat. <laughs>